in the energy rating of our battery. And to do so, we take the 12 volts, uh, the 12.8 volts, better still, which is our battery nominal voltage, and multiply it by the battery current of 200 ampere hours. Then we have uh, 2,560 watts. If we take 2,560 watts and we divide it by 56 watts, which is the amount of load that is going on our battery bank, what we get is 45 hours. What if I tell you that your 12.8 volts, 200 ampere hour battery can run your freezer for 24 hours? That begs the $1 billion question of how, right? So to answer that question correctly, we'll do a simple calculation to figure out how long your battery can actually power your freezer. And we're considering three things. One, your battery depth of discharge. Two, the inverter efficiency in case you're using a freezer that uses AC current. Uh, you have to use an inverter to convert the DC current from your battery to AC current for the freezer to work. And three, we're considering the amount of load that is going on the battery bank. So with these three things, we can properly size the load that goes on your battery bank. Then we can use it to figure out how long your battery bank will run the load. Now, let's say we have three scenarios. One here is a freezer that is DC type and takes just uh, 50 watts. So you need 50 watts to run this guy. And this guy here is an inverter uh, type of uh, freezer or perhaps analysis itself as an energy saving freezer that is pretty compatible with uh, you know, an inverter system. Then you have this guy here, which is pretty energy hungry, uses the old compressor and can take up to 1000 watt from your uh, battery bank or from your inverter system. And the reason we're coming up with th this is because uh, you know, you have uh, people in, uh, here in Nigeria filling their homes with things like this. And, uh, you know, they take a lot of current and we can blame that on the fact that the metering system with the national grid doesn't work. We always have our issues when it's time to go solar or go green. You bring these guys on the inverter systems and they don't work pretty well. So, and for this guy here that is a DC type and takes just uh, 50 watts, you can hook it directly to your battery. And when it is hooked directly to your battery, you eliminate the need for an inverter and an adapter. Because to hook this guy to an inverter, you have to first connect the inverter to the battery and there will be some DC to AC conversion. And during DC to AC conversion, you have what is known as the lost factor. The lost factor is the amount of energy that is lost from your battery when an inverter converts the DC current from your battery to AC. And this can differ from one inverter type to another inverter type. So if you have the a pure sine wave inverter, a pretty decent one, can give you up to 90% efficiency. And with 90% efficiency, you can get 0.9 safety factor, and the energy uh, loss is pretty minimal. But when you're using this freezer here, you don't need an inverter. And should you use an inverter for this uh, type of uh, uh, you know, freezer, it means you also have to get an adapter that goes from the inverter to the freezer. So you're having two conversions, DC to AC, and then uh, AC to DC, and this is not very good. So you want to run the guy directly on your battery if you can, or if it is possible. Then you have this guy here that announces itself as an energy saving freezer, which is designed to be compatible with solar systems or inverter systems. And this guy takes just 100 watt. So you need an inverter in your system to run this guy. Most of the appliances in our homes use AC, so it's not really a big deal to have this guy on your system since for the most part we always have an inverter on our system to power most of these ac devices then you have this big guy here so we also consider a scenario where you have this guy and you want to put it on your inverter system you know how long your inverter system is really going to run this guy so we begin with the dc and for the dc we're considering two things one the battery depth of discharge or dod then two the load which is 50 watt from the freezer. So a lithium ion battery or life PO4 as the case with this video can give you up to 90% efficiency and that gives you 0.9 safety factor. And this is what you use to factor the extent to which you can discharge your battery. 
So we can discharge up to 90% of our battery and we can get a 0 0.9 safety factor from, you know, this. If our load is 50 watts, we need to calculate how much load in total is going on the battery. We take 50 watts from our freezer and we divide it by our battery DOD or safety factor of 0 0.9. What this gives us is 55, approximately 56 watts. 56 watts is the total load we will have on our battery bank if we connect our DC freezer directly to our battery bank. Now, to figure out how long our battery bank will run this guy, we have to first uh, determine the energy rating of our battery. And to do so, we take the 12 volts, uh, or 12.8 volts, better still, which is our battery nominal voltage, and multiply it by the battery current of 200 ampere hours. Then we have uh, 2,560 watts. If we take 2,560 watts and we divide it by 56 watts, which is the amount of load that is going on our battery bank, what we get is 45 hours. And uh, for the one that announces itself as inverter uh, freezer right here, and it takes uh, 100 watts. To do a simple calculation for this guy, all we have to do is consider inverter efficiency. So since we're hooking that guy up to inverter and our inverter has 90% efficiency, 90% efficiency, we take 100 watts and divide it by 0 0.9 safety factor. And that gives us 111 watts. Then we take 111 watt and divide it by our battery DOD of 0 0.9 because we can get 0 0.9 DOD or 90% uh, depth of discharge from our battery since we have a life PO4 battery. This isn't the case with uh, dry cell or lead acid batteries. You can only get 50% uh, depth of discharge from those batteries. So if we divide this by 0 0.9, it gives us 123 watts. So 123 watt is what is going on the battery. And if we take uh, if we take 2560 and divide it by 123, we get 20 hours. So this guy can run on your battery bank for 20 hours. That's uh, the inverter type of a uh, freezer or the freezer that is de designed to be compatible with an inverter system. Then we have this big guy here which takes a lot of current and uh, our big guy here it's a uh, power rating is 1000 watts. 1000 watts so we divide it by our inverter efficiency of 0 0.9 so it gives us uh, 1111 watts. And if we divide 1,111 watts by 0 0.9, which is our battery depth of discharge, what we get is 1,234 watts. So 1,234 watts on our battery bank. If we, okay, let's say this is approximately 1,250 watts. Then we take 2,560 and divide it by 1,250, 250 watts. So this gives us... 2.048 hours approximately two hours two hours is what you're getting when you have this big guy on your inverter system this is a simple way to calculate how much uh, energy or how much power your devices are actually taking from your battery and if you want to get the power rating for your freezer or for the devices in your home all you have to do is look for stickers or labels on these devices which provide the power rating and you always see the power rating specified in watts and watts is the unit of measurement for power so when you see 250 watts uh, sometimes you can see a lot of details maybe they tell you that the fridge uh, lamp is using 15 watts this is using 50 watts this is using this and that and for some freezers you just see the total uh, power rating being uh, maybe 200 watt, 100 watt, 50 watts. And for the TVs and other appliances in your homes, you just look for the label, you look closely, and you saw the power specified in watts. So you can see maybe 50 watts or 50W, W is watt. So if you see 50W, that tells you you have a 50 watt. And if you see it, if you see it uh, written in full watts, then you know you have 50 watts. And sometimes you don't have power rating of the device specified in watts. Maybe you see 220 volts, 0 0.5 amps, 220 volts, 1 amp. So when you see 220 volts, 
0.5 amps, what you do basically to get the power rating of your device in watts is to multiply the voltage of the device, which is 220 volts, by its current rating of 0.5. So if you take uh, 220 uh, volts and multiply it by 0.5 amps, you get 110 watts. So this is basically how you calculate a uh, watt or power rating of a device from its current when you have its voltage and current, but you don't have the power rating specified. In some cases, you can have the power rating and the current uh, rating for the device specified. So that brings us to the end of this video. And if you like this video, like it. If you dislike it, like it, but let me know what your take is on the video in the comment section. And also let me know where you're watching from. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video. Bye for now.